Next topic, topic three. I'll go this time, and we'll we'll end with Nick's final topic. Okay. I want to talk to you guys about forgotten tech. Now, here's what I mean by this. It's not things that like you know, oh the uh, you know, like you like abacus? interchangeable parts and shit like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want, what I'm talking about is things that you might have grown up with or kind of were astounded by at some point in your life that are just totally fucking irrelevant now. Mm. So the VCR could be an example or something like that. But my two examples are this. I I've, I think I might have mentioned this in the past, but I I always I find this fucking hilarious. I, I grew up on Long Island in a, in a, in a pretty big house, and uh, it's conceivable that I think I know if you're, you're in this. the kitchen and dinner's ready, <laughs> right, right, yeah. and everyone else is upstairs in their bedrooms, that yeah. you're not going to hear, even if you scream, like, you're not going to hear anything. My mom would, she, she would disagree with you, Yeah, well, but that's okay. This was, I, I grew up in a big colonial house, so it's like, sure. it's, it, it was, it was, it was, it was big. And at some point, my dad installed an intercom the intercom in the kitchen and it had like multiple panels where oh, like, yeah. i think there was an intercom like maybe one in the garage one in the kitchen and then like there was a box upstairs by the bedrooms or where and we used it for literally like a week before i was like what do we why are we even having have this and like and i but at the time when it was happening i like woke up to play with it and like waited for someone to use it and stuff like that like the because if you remember tim might not remember Unless you've been in some like older houses where, but like you, I'm sure you remember like intercoms were a, a thing in the 80s. Like people, I definitely did not remember. This oh no, I had like an intercom in my house growing up, and it was hilarious because the technology was so bad that someone it, there used to be these little boxes that you have in your rooms, and then there was like a master control box downstairs where you could like I think we had two channels. I don't remember. I remember there being like three buttons. I was like, why do you need three buttons? It's talk or don't talk. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean but like what inevitably would happen is my mom would start to use it and my mother has I love my mother she is she is a great woman I have more respect for her than any other person on this planet but patience is not one of her virtues she does not have it and so she would depress the button and all you would hear was this and I'm like what what about the radar and I'm like I don't I don't know what the what are you what are you talking about? And then she would just scream, "Dinner's ready!" So that was it. That's that's as far as we used it. And this damn thing sat in my room for like fifteen years until my dad eventually ripped it out and rid of the walls. But that's all I got. Yeah, I mean that's, <laughs> that's all I got. So I remember, we used it like I, once or twice. Yeah, I remember it was just like this novelty. Item. I'll never forget it. Like that we had. But this it's a room. good idea. I guess like the house. We didn't live in a mansion. It wasn't like you could have like a blood curdling scream and scream and it can see. I feel like they installed this specifically for my brother and my sisters who were always just like listening to loud ass music and they just didn't feel like going upstairs. Um, so that was the one thing. But the second thing that I wanted to talk about that I think has been integrated in our tech is the MP3 player. Oh, and this is, this is, answer. this is pre iPod. Like I remember the first MP3 player I ever used was my friend Cody's and it had 128 megabytes of memory. And I remember I couldn't even fit 311's transistor on it, which is a record. Like you had to be so selective I'd go to hockey and like listen to it in my like in the locker room before games. You had to be so slow. It was like eight songs. Like what eight songs are gonna fucking hype you up today? Because that's yeah. the only mm-hmm. thing you're gonna fit on this fucking thing. You know, might even be sixty four megabytes or something like that. And uh, it's so funny how that was so like I was like I, and I remember with this te- this particular technology. I'm like why? Like I remember in like nineteen ninety nine two thousand. I'm like why do you need an MP three player? MP threes are fun. We're using them. Napster is out by this point. But I'm like, we can just burn our CDs. It's not funny. You right. Make, you make even little data CDs and you can put like 600 megabytes on yeah. them. So like, what's the big deal? And it, it was just so funny that at its embryonic state, it didn't seem that impressive. It wasn't until Apple really made made you impressed mm-hmm. with it. But so that's the other piece of forgotten technology is the MP3 player. Like no one really uses a dedicated music player anymore. Well, I mean, it's on your phone. That's the mini disc. The mini, I, had, mini I had a mini disc player. Of course you did. And well, uh, do, I mean, do you remember the day ba- like back in the late 80s, early 90s where your, your understanding of how tech would evolve was like, nah, no one's ever going to do that. Like, your first reaction was like, we don't, it's not going to pick up. Not, we, we don't need it because tech didn't evolve as quickly as it does today. So I, I looked at the MP3 player. I was like, that's completely useless. I already have something that does that. It's called the CD. And now we've all sort of had to retrain ourselves to understand that, like, tech is an, is an ever-evolving, ever-changing thing and that don't get used to this because something else is coming out in a year from now and nothing's – it's all yeah. meaningless. But, it's like, nuts. but yeah, I remember specifically the mini-disc and I was like – that seems really cool. I think it was in like Last Action Hero. They always had the product placements where it was like, let's play the thing. And it was like a mini disc. And you're like, all right, play the thing. Put it in. It was like supposed to be dope. And that just didn't take off. Sony had a really bad period Sony, there in the, the 80s. The problem with Sony, and I was like, I mean, even through the early 2000s, like, I mean, 
even after the iPod they were fucking up. But they did this thing where it's all proprietary. Everything had to be yeah. proprietary. And it really kind of fucked them up. I remember transitioning from the CD player, which they're, they're Walkman. I mean, they fucking ran supreme. Like, their portable CD players were on point. They were lit. Those the clamshells? Yes. Yeah. yeah, they were fucking amazing. And then they eventually made this new tech. They, they were pushing the mini discs hard. They had their little, I don't remember what they were called, but like the square portable players you can put the mini the disc disc players in. on. Yeah, yeah, but like Sony had a specific brand of them. Discman. Mm-hmm. Wasn't mini disc their brand? I think Minidisc was there. Oh, brand. really? Yeah. I don't okay. think anyone else well, made it a Minidisc. It just whatever. Didn't pick so up. they had that. But then eventually they added a new technology to CD players <laughs> called A Track or something. A A Track. A T R A C. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I remember and, that. And yeah. um, that blended the two. So it was MP3s on CDs. So you could do the data CDs and mm. just put it, but you couldn't put MP3s. It had to be this stupid ass A Track Sony file because that's the way fucking Sony rolls. Right. But I remember that being a game changer because then all of a sudden I had 700 megabits of music on one cd so i didn't have that problem anymore and you can organize it by albums so you could put a couple albums like eight albums on one cd that was fucking awesome but those like even thinking back to the 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 first time i held an ipod in maybe 10 years was like two days ago i just saw one at my friend's house and i picked it up i'm like i can't believe well, they're this heavy. Isn't part, well no, no not even that just this isn't part of my life anymore mm. like it's nuts that this doesn't have apps. This only plays music. And when I had it, like back when I had my Nano or when I had my, like the the classic or whatever, I was just like, I'm never going to not have this on me. You know, like I remember thinking that like, this is part of me, of who I mm. am. Like now I'll never leave my house without headphones in my, like earphones in my pocket. Like, will there be a day that I don't do that? That I don't have those on me? Because now that like music is just part of my phone, and like more and more, it's just getting subjected to just like a smaller part of an app. Like there's not even a music app on iPhones anymore. Now it's Apple Music. Oh yeah, your music. It's a it's a little folder in right. that. You know that's crazy to me that it, that's how much it's changing. That it's like you don't even own, you don't even have access to your shit anymore. But going yeah, I mean, back yeah, to the CD was... players, man, like that. I'm so nostalgic about that because I feel I I was the perfect age at the end of the the perfected CD player Walkman. Where going to school every day, holding it, it would break. You got to get a fucking rubber band because it wouldn't play unless you put it over it. Like all that shit. Everyone had one. They had the colored ones. And you, once they get the colored ones, that's when you know. That's when you know. It's almost, yeah. it's, it's, it's been perfected. Yeah. It's the, so. it's the epitome of it. Um, the CD player in general was groundbreaking. I mean, that was a game changer because up until that point, you wasted, and Colin can attest, I'm sure you don't remember these, but when you were using cassettes. Yeah thousands of hours rewinding and then you were like oh i want to just go to that one part in a song and you weren't quite real like familiar with the album enough to figure out where the fuck that thing was so you're just like fast forward wait was it there shit it's on the other side and then you had to do the math in your head of like wait till yeah. i rewind or fast forward never again yeah. the analog era i'm glad it's dead because when the cd came out you were like oh wait i can just skip to the next track and fast forward and pause and do all these things oh my god yeah. Change the game. Yeah, I remember getting my my first portable CD player in like '96 or '97. That was in '96. God damn. And uh, it was the before they had like the shock protection. Mm-hmm. So I was I was making Greg laugh the other day because I, I bought I bought my CD player and White Town's Women in Technology on the same day. Do you remember? Do you know White Town? No, I don't. You, do you? Do you? I'll sh- I'll, I'll show. Is, is that an album? A musical group. Women. White Town is the band. Women in Technology was that particular. Got record. It. I'll show you. Absolutely know the song. Uh, I'm While Spotify you're looking now. it up, I'm going to give a quick shout out to the pager. That was my oh, the pager. Yeah. The pager was one of those things where I'm like, I'll never be without this. And then the cell phone came out like a little while later. Like I got a pager and then like that was in high school. And then by freshman year of college, I think I had a cell phone and yeah. it just killed the pager. I think I was too young for that because pager to me was always something that never made sense. I was like, why would you use that? Like, well, I don't yeah. understand. Yeah, the well, pager, I mean, everyone had a pager back then. I mean, I, I didn't, I never, I wasn't, uh, you know, I was a little too young for it. I remember my sisters and my brother's friends all had, like, pagers, and, like, they would. There was a pager, there was a whole pager culture. Do you remember it? Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, absolutely. Like, the way yeah, you like, type things on the pager uh, and the, the messages mm, you leave, like, it was like, a really weird kind the of The color thing. of the pager, mm-hmm. the build of the pager. I mean, it was like, it was like a mini cell phone revolution, but you yeah. had, the, like, I had a purple pager. It was dope. Well, was I mean, the, that, the, the flip phone. Like one cell phone's got to the flip aspect, and you can change the actual covers of the phone, like not cases, but like flip out the, the right. covers and, and face plates and shit. Oh man, my T seven twenty. 
Oh, I think I had a Verizon flip phone, but I didn't work of art. The 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 the, the beautiful, like the, the best flip phone. I think was the was it the Crazer or the Razor? Well, the Razor like, was the one that like that. that once it got that, there, that was kind of the what we were saying earlier about like nailing the perfection of the flip it. phone. Yeah, but up until then, there were really there was options. There wasn't just. This or nothing. God, my wife had one of those up until about five years ago. I swear to God. Yeah. And it was like yeah. pristine. I'm like, this is like you just bought it yesterday. Yeah. All right, give, ready? It to me. give me a little bit of white white noise. White, white Town. White Town. This is their single. You'll definitely know this one. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm not gonna play anymore because we got a copyright track. Uh, but that's, yeah. so, I bought, so I remember I bought that record and my portable CD player and I went to a hockey tournament that day Did, and I remember sitting I remember sitting because it didn't have the shock protection I remember sitting in the back seat like just holding it like this being like please don't move please don't like yeah. like holding it as still as possible then you go over a bump and it would be like uh, <laughs> yeah it's time to start all over you probably know this this is probably super obvious but I was blown away because it sounds familiar do you know what that song samples no I don't I don't really I don't think so listen to it again real quick I don't really want I don't are we gonna get a copyright strike nah, we'll nah be, through that we'll be fine is it Star Wars? Yeah. It's oh, Imperial March. Wow. Oh, I never even I, I didn't even realize that. that. Yeah. Yes. I knew something. I didn't know. I never even realized that. That's crazy. I was ha- sorry I bought that album because it sucked. Um, <laughs> but that song's great. That's a great song. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so those were kind of my examples of dead tech that I was I was astounded by. Because I remember getting my first iPod, even like you were saying. Like I I remember getting my iPod and being like, this is fucking awesome. I remember I got it for my birthday. Both my parents like combined money and, and got it for me. And I was like, this is such a an ama- I remember how heavy it was so heavy mm-hmm. I re- and I remember being like this is great this is fantastic I can't believe like you were saying I can't believe I just walk around listening to music all day it was so novel walking into class like a, a couple minutes before it started and taking out your earbuds and realizing your music's just blaring at yeah. your fucking earbuds mm-hmm. and being like oh, okay. yeah, I don't give a fuck <laughs> um, so yeah I mean those were kind of it's just funny how a lot of these things have fused into this just yeah. one machine I mean it's it's crazy too like we're getting into the real specific memories we have of this stuff but like and we've talked about this before, but the way you interact with music has changed so much. Like that, having to rewind the cassettes and stuff, because mm-hmm. that was at the the birth of me listening to music, sure. was the tail end of the cassettes. Mm-hmm. And also, I was poor, so I didn't get a CD player until... Like, the PS1 was my first CD player mm. at all. Mm. And then Portable, that wasn't until, like, way late, like, probably 2001 or two. Right. Um, but having to rewind and stuff, you get intimately familiar with the music in a way that you don't when you're just kind of like skipping, skipping, skipping. Having said that, then you get to the CDs and you only had that one CD. You didn't, if you were on the bus, you only brought one. So you were listening to that album for the next week or for whatever it was, switch it out and then constantly switching. You didn't have that many CDs. So my brother, I'll never forget my brother when he, uh, my brother was one of those guys that was super into having a subwoofer in his car. Good. Like having a good sound system. Do you remember, did you guys ever go through that phase? Oh, yeah. Well, so my about, brother definitely. had the amp. Oh, you're going to get the amp with the sub? Are you kidding me? Hell yeah. Am I free to see? Oh, my God. It's such a waste of space. Don't do it. Um, but my brother had this amazing, like, sub in, in the back of his car. It was, like, two subs. Fucking took up his entire trunk with, like, a blue amp and, like, had everything wired in. And he used to have these. He used to – remember when you, you drive was when you really needed – a space saver for the CDs. You had to figure out some sort of system that mm. would allow you to bring your entire CD collection into your car without getting stepped on, but it had to be malleable enough so that you could like fit it under there. So they had the CD, the big CD cases. Do you remember those? The binders. My brother had like two of them. They were like this big. And he had every Metallica album humanly possible, which was hilarious because I was like, why are you bumping Metallica with a subwoofer? You don't really need that. But he also liked some rap and stuff too. Mostly Metallica though, come to think of it. <laughs> it was really weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was that was hilarious because I caught, you know, I had one of those. I still have it. It's yeah. in my garage, like underneath my apartment complex. And it's just collecting dust. And I think all the CDs are like stuck together because it was like that hard plastic. Yo, yeah. Also, I used to masturbate all over them. Um, <laughs> just, seeing that, Ke- that. just seeing if Kevin's still paying attention. <laughs> He's not. He was checking. Uh, yeah. Boy, you on Reddit again? What are you, what are you looking at the chive? Cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the CDs for me were, were, they were just amazing. I think my first, I think the first CD I ever bought was Pearl Jam. Was uh, the first Pearl Jam album? Ten. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a uh, the ones with the hands. Where now, they were, like, he, but well, he, touching each other. Like it was like a ten way high five. It was like it's so damn. Heavy. Here's the fucked up thing about the CD binders though, because I, I my this never happened to me, thank God. But I remember because I had a C, you know a really robust CD collection at one point that was very good up to a certain point. Uh, 
you always knew people that got their stolen out of their car or whatever, oh, and yeah. then it was over for them. Yeah. It was over. Nothing. I mean, that's like start that, over. That could be potentially thousands of dollars. Yeah. Or you, you know, loan like, your CD geez. to someone, and like you totally forgot you loaned. You're like, where the hell is my Chronic album? You have no idea where it went. And you'll never see that again. Yeah, it's true. Man. I mean, that's that's one of the things. Like as far as a bygone technology or forgotten, you know, tech is concerned, the concept of ownership, I think, is gone as well. It's, but in in regards to the digital medium and digital media, is it. that I just don't think. With the exception of games, where you can download games still, but I'm uh, with movies specifically in music. Like, there's, I don't own anything anymore. I, own I don't. Everything. I just. I don't buy Blu-rays, which is funny to say because I love. I mean, I like the quality of Blu-rays, but I don't need a shelf full of Blu-rays. I I've do. got Netflix. I've got Spotify. I just, I've let that part of me go that needs to own a physical piece of media. I don't think and I, I just, I'll never go back to it. It's never gonna happen. You just, it's just for me. It's just economics. I don't need to buy a th- like. I don't need to buy a movie. I'm never going to watch again. It makes sense. If I want, like, how what many, you're when, saying makes sense. Way, how many times do you watch a movie? Never. Even if you watch it, <laughs> let's put it this way. Even if you end up renting it three times, uh-huh. that's still probably less than the movie costs on yeah, Blu-ray, right? But you don't get to look at it. And it's not all pretty. You don't. And that's, for a lot of people, the, the idea of collecting. And for you guys specifically, I know you guys like your games. You've got an amazing library out there. And you like to just go and be able yeah, to but, pick and grab. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I hate collecting games now I, yeah. I, i'm all about digital same thing with music i used to buy a lot of music and i, I don't buy any music anymore i don't buy, I buy fucking it. any I music buy everything i don't you i don't know, need I, it. I, I i mean i'm doing what i'm doing is perfectly legal but i use i use spotify or i just use youtube yeah you know? so yeah like, like little dickie's album came out and i i mean i streamed it and just kind of listened to some of my song but i didn't like buy it or really invest in the album yeah. until i got it from amazon shipped in a cd ripped it myself dope see going back to it like what i was saying is it's like you just interacted with the music in a different way yeah once we hit this digital era, it's just it's so just on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next yeah, thing. Always talking that for me, this at least this slows me down, and I have yeah, to. It's rip amazing it, to me that like, I need to kind of like rename each file. So explain what you do, because <laughs> I I, I, want, I I don't want people to get a, a misconception. You buy the CD, yes. You rip the actual high quality audio tracks from yes. the, the uh, what are they wave files or AI, AIFF files, whatever. Well, they are. I mean. It, it starts as just a lossless CD file. And right. Well, that, it, even that's a little, well, it's it's got a level like, of compression on it. But well, I don't use the, the iTunes or any of that shit. I use it's well, called EAC. I'm sure you, audio converter. It's the okay. best. So you best take that case. and then you convert that to MP3s that or to WAV files that you then load onto well, your phone. So not WAV. It's you can. What I do is I like to make three versions because I'm a crazy person. But there's the FLAC file, which is essentially lossless. Sure. Um. And then, but that doesn't really play on devices why not um just because it's too big and and the, well at least apple devices are made for it. there's apps for it but that's right. a whole other thing then i make an mp3 very high quality you can change the the quality sure. there um and then i make a uh, apple lossless file which is flack but apple's version and it's like slightly compressed but it's still way higher quality than any mp3 will be Got and it. that's what all my shit is yeah, I mean that's the thing that confuses me just in the sense that I have a I have a great ear for music and I enjoy high quality music. I enjoy, I always tell people like you know wear good headphones, get a good speaker. Like I have a Bose speaker and it, it matters. Mm-hmm. But the compression only goes so far, even when you're streaming music. Like the, the difference between like a lossless file that you're 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 ripping and the high quality if you set your Spotify to high quality is not not super different. So you can set your Spotify thing. to high quality. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'm the type of motherfucker that like doing that right now. Just knowing it is enough for me that I just, I can't get it out of my head. And it's like the FedEx arrow. And I'm just like, you know, you have that moment where you're like, well, fuck. Like, this sounds worse. I just know it does. But having said that, I'm like, you know what? I need to grow the fuck up and get over that. And now that Apple Music is something that I use to like stream and stuff because it's free right now. No um, shit. I'm on the automatic. Can I put it on extreme? You could. It's just going to use a lot of your... First of all, it's gonna the songs are, might buffer before you play them, and it's going to use more of your data. Oh, shit. I'm going high. That's crazy. But recently, I've been in my car doing this, like, for the first time actually streaming music. So, like I was saying, Lil Dicky, I was streaming yeah, whatever. shit. I'll put it back on automatic. And the difference between streaming it in high quality, and then when I bought the album and did it, and, like, I did a test, and I'm like, it's it's a big difference. Like, especially in my car, where I'm like, the well, bass is just richer. Yeah, it's but think, think about this, though. I mean, you can just put it in terms of mathematics. When you ripped a CD, wasn't it like 100 and... You could set 128, but you could set it to anything. It could be lower than that. No, but what? how big were... How much can CDs hold? 700 MB. 700 megabytes, well, right? Well, data. Of data. As audio, it can only hold like 70 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, but that, but that converts to roughly 700, depending on the how many tracks, and you'd have to compress it a little bit more. But like, say, an average album has, what, like 12 to 13 tracks on it? Roughly. So each song is we'll see. Say five seven hundred. I'm just trying to figure out how much each song was. It was in the it was in the tens of twenties of megabytes per 
song, right? If you rip it off, like when you rip a track, how big is that track? Well, I mean, it gets complicated because you you can't just rip the CD, whatever the CD's files are. Those don't exist in digital. Yeah, they're making, format. I mean, that's why you can set it to like 256, I thought was considered at the time good. back in the day. Three, pretty good. 320 is the best you're going to get for it. Right, but what I'm in terms of like what they actually do. If, it, if you have a, a wave file, right? I'm just, mm-hmm. I'll put it in terms of pure recording of audio, yes. right? You have a wave file. Those tend to be 10 to 20 times bigger than an MP3 file. So when you look at the difference between those, you're, you got it. Same with video, right? Mm-hmm. Where if you start with, like we, you know, when we do recordings of stuff that we want to be really, really nice, even if we record a ProRes, you're talking like, you know, a gig uh, every 10 yeah. minutes or whatnot. And then you upload, you compress that to three gigs total for like an hour piece of content, mm-hmm. that's a shit ton of yeah, information it, you got to throw out. You're it's just one of those it things out. where it's, a, it's, it's got to come law, from somewhere, right? Law of diminishing returns cool. where th- you're doing that to the parts that don't necessarily need it because like, you know, you don't really pick up on all those things or whatever. Right. But listening to it, it's like there's a difference, you know, and like knowing that not only is there a difference in numbers, but I can hear it. That's where I'm like, of course all right, you can. I just got to keep this it's all It's all dynamic range, right? It's the same with video where like there, it's you're, the codec... Someone dying? Someone's getting killed outside. Kevin, just keep checking Reddit. It's fine. You're okay. <laughs> it's fine. He's playing like... Uh, what are you playing? Uh, Fantasy Star Online? Uh, Jetpack. <laughs> <laughs> Jetpack Joe. Right. Fantasy Star Online. Um, <laughs> no, it's got to come from somewhere, right? So, I mean, that, and that's the thing that they talk about a lot with films is dynamic range. Is like the bigger the camera, the more information it records, the bigger the dynamic range of like light to dark. And it's the same with audio, right? Those those bass drops have a dynamic range of here. And then when you compress them, you're taking them and just basically taking the middle mm-hmm. and you're taking the highs and lows out because the middle is really what people hear. The rest of it is just giving the depth to the song. And people don't really, really need that. Yeah. Now, I don't really notice it because I listen to all my music on a pair of $10 Sony yeah. headphones that look like they're from 1987. And in that case, none of it matters. It doesn't so fucking matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, yeah, it no, is it, what it is. It was, I was saying to Tim when we were in your car, I'm like, I need to mess with with Nick's, like your treble and your bass are, are all mixed up in your car. And it's one of, it's one of those things where... You, could, you totally should. Uh, it's one of those things where... It depends on the kind of music. So, like when we were listening to hip hop on the way yeah. back from Napa or whatever, I'm like, "This is this is getting ble- this is ble- bleeding out in the treble territory really badly." But again, it sounds probably fine if you're listening to talk radio or like smoother music, right? So, I get the point I'm trying to make is is that you have to to con- compensate for some of these things. You can also fuck a lot with with like the equalizers, the, yeah, equalizing stuff. like all of mm. all of like what you're listening to. It's a pain in the ass. But what I'm saying though is that the high quality little dicky that the highest quality you have and the highest quality streaming. There's there's a a difference, and we could all probably hear it. But is the diff? It's like ten percent. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's the it, missing it, returns. There's, there's on a it. there's a, a convergent point yeah. that we're reaching. I think where soon you won't have to worry. You, soon you won't have an excuse. Yeah. Whether or not that's you want, thing. whether or not you I want, want to continue physical. to do it. Well, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. That's what I'm surprised about with Amazon specifically. I'm, I'm not surprised I, um, Apple doesn't do it, but I'm surprised no one has the option to be like buy the FLAC <laughs> file or like the file. Mm-hmm. That is exactly the highest quality possible from the CD. Like that's so weird to me, you know, that like they don't do that. It seems like they have like yeah, multiple but remember, options. They but it's a bandwidth not, thing. I guess they should pay for it. Well, so Bandcamp does that, you know. Right, like, but they're not the, real. That's, that's not really a, a store. Like as, but as, I mean, in terms of for music, that mm-hmm. is why Bandcamp does that. Is that what's what differentiates them from everybody else? And mm-hmm. the the thing there is, is like it's really a bandwidth thing where the the size difference is. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. If people no, were huge. to do that, it would be just simply not worth it for them. I'm talking know? like, yeah, I mean, the average song, what, two, three megabytes versus 50 or 20 megabytes yes. per song, depending on what you want. Yeah. So it's a pretty big deal considering it's not like movies where you're like, oh, I'm just going to download a couple movies for a plane ride. I mean, if you're going to download two or 300 songs and have them at your disposal, you're talking a huge, huge difference in, uh, in bandwidth and or storage. Yeah. So it's true. I mean, for me, I've never been a huge, I've never been into audio quality. I just mm-hmm. never have. Yeah. You know, coming from marching band, you know, I like my music live and in brass. You know what I mean? It's so like recorded. You guys with your recorded era now. Uh, no, but for films, I can understand. It's fascinating to me that I never got into Blu-rays. I just, I think it, for me it was economics. I was like, I can't afford a Blu-ray player. And then I never had a PS3. Yeah. I mean, so I think a I never big thing there Blu-rays. too is what we're talking about where, you know, back in the early 90s, you guys were like, oh, I don't trust technology and, you know, I don't believe this is going to catch on. Now it's different where it's like we know things are going to change every five fucking yeah. seconds. So it's like why invest in a Blu-ray collection unless you're fucking crazy and stupid, you know? Part of you maybe wants to hold on to the the, or the easier days, you know? Maybe there's a part of you that's just like this is all too fast. I need to have something. I mean, I think that's why collectors collect is that, you know, they want to hold on to that little bit of history that – 
slows the world down a little bit. And especially in this day and age, I think it's incredibly important to have that part of you. Mm-hmm. Um, but you'll one day you get married and that that all that stuff will start to go away because your because <laughs> your wife will just go like this. Do nah. we do we need all those Harry Potter books? And I'm like, well, you know, I waited in line till you know at midnight to get that seventh book, and like, you know, I ran back so no one would spoil the ending for me. She's like, do we need them? Do we? I like how you say that as if you had to run away from the bookstore because someone was going to spoil people, the book. That people, they people, people did no, this, dude. I know, I know. Hey, so and so, I'm like Joe. About to get fucking shot, homie. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to spoil Harry Potter for me, son. This has been 10 years in the making. Before, before we move on from this topic, the last thing I want to say, because you brought up the whole walking into class and your shit blaring hell loud. I'll never forget, like, doing the like the star tests and all that. Did you guys do star tests? Is that a thing? Mm-hmm. Like, the you know, there's the multiple choice Scholastic, tests. Scholastic. Like, Scholastic bullshit. You know, stuff was, yeah, sure. So we would do that, and then you could, it, it was one of those things where it's like, if you finish early, you can sit there quietly. You can't leave the room. You can't do anything. So you're there for like fucking five hours just not doing shit. Sure. So I'm like listening to music. But you, the progression of devices totally changed how you listen to music. Because you can't be sitting there on your CD player clicking the next track, next track, next track, volume, 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 volume. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If it had the volume slider, you're fucking golden. Yeah. But if you had to clickety-clack to fucking make that shit go up and down... You just gotta kind of have to write it out at whatever volume because people start doing the look back at you, and the teacher starts giving like, you the I'm finger sorry, and shit. But then the iPod happened, and it was the same thing where the scroll, the scroll, why well, can't I say scroll that word? Wheel. scroll wheel? Scroll wheel. Yeah. Uh, you just kind of go through all the stuff if you turn off that fucking clicking noise, and you'd be fine. But then it'd be the next track that that deep, that heavy deep ass depression. Click. Of, man, that thing was heavy, dude. Yeah. My wife used the hat. She had an original iPad. She called it Bert the I- or the iPod. Bert the iPod. I don't know what it was called. That's one of her ex dipshit boyfriends bought it for her. Uh-huh. I was like, let's call it Bert. And I was like, fucking strangle you. Um, Damn. It, just re- it just reminds me of my wife having sex with other guys and, you know, sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's not. Anyway, she, there was that deep, like, it, it was a thick it device, was a man. Real thick it had some girth click. to it. It had some feeling, the tactility yeah. of it. You would push it in and your finger wouldn't come back for like a two or three milliseconds. <laughs> it was intense, man. Yeah, but so then I, I remember when the iPod Built Touch house happened because I didn't have an iPhone like the first gen, but the iPod Touch Solved everything. Mm. You in here? I mean, there's the one click of the home screen. Besides that, you could just do whatever you wanted. Mm-hmm. And oh, God bless senior year of yeah. high school. That was a good time. God, senior year of high school. I had a pager in senior year of high school. Pager. It's good topic. Old. All right. Good topic, Colin. 